Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to His Press Project. I'm Joel Wolf, and we are here in Oklahoma, actually right here on Arkansas River, as you can see behind me, and uh, at a town called Tomaha. A lot of Oklahoma folks around here in the local area calls it Tomaha. Guess how you want to pronounce it, but in the proper way of Choctaw is Tomaha. Tomaha means town or, or city. Um, but right here at the Arkansas River is the some significance of the Choctaw history. So a couple weeks ago, we was in uh, Mississippi. And of course, in Mississippi, we was talking about the uh, removal at the uh, Dancing Rabbit Creek Treaty Monument with the uh, royalties and, and their family. Of course, we was talking about their homeland as they were signing the treaty to be moved over this way to the Indian Territory and the new homelands of now of Oklahoma. So anyway, why I'm here at this Arkansas River, uh, actually a uh, reservoir, but the Arkansas River is just beyond here. Uh, you go back over 170, 180 years ago, as you see here, probably once a just a regular size river. And uh, of course, this possibly was a creek at one time, or just a small or river, or you say, yeah, maybe a river or creek. But in that time, when the Choctaws were removed on this top, uh, this northern section of Oklahoma, or in the Choctaw Nation, you could say. Uh, there was removed probably about 25 30 minutes from here as they was landing in uh, Fort Smith Arkansas so as they get their landings over there in Fort Smith Arkansas uh, in the east from here where I'm standing there was making a way on the boat so some went a little bit south of course to Scullyville and uh, in that area but some other parties came along and came made their way on the boat and some came along and entered this area right here where I'm pretty much where I'm standing came along in this area and of course they docked off just right behind me so you look in the east and they're coming off of that river right here so this possibly like I said must be a creek at one time and they landed in this area right here So they came in to this place and landed around the area. So locals saying that uh, they possibly maybe landed right here where I'm standing at. And some say it's a little just up north up there on the bluff. There's a little landing spot. But it could be both ways. They can land here where I'm standing at or land up that way. So it could be either way, but uh, this kind of looks more like a landing spot to me, but that's a bluff up there, so it might be some landing spot, but you can't really see it. So like I said, throughout times, this is just kind of a creek area, I possibly say, and then of course, off the Arkansas River coming, leading this way from Fort Smith. So actually, I don't know how many parties or how many came on this side of, in this area of Tamaha. And of course, you know, you know, quite a bit came down towards Scullyville and some came through this way as well. So this is another route on the river as they was traveling through here and landed in this area right here behind me. And nothing's really been said about this area as much, you know. You heard about Scullyville, a lot of them, a lot of Choctaws went through there, of course. That's the uh, place where they get their uh, allotment, their money, and and that's where all the agency was at, at the time. Now you got uh, the south part of the Choctaw Nation, which will be Fort Towson area, Eagle Town, Dokesville. So that's their area that came along, and that's pretty much well known. But often, you rarely hear about Tamaha. 
Uh, this is possibly where, you know, most Choctaws came along in this area. Uh, maybe a hundred Choctaws came here, 200, I, that, I don't know, I can't figure. I'm still trying to get some research on if you know, anybody knows how many uh, Choctaws that came in Tamaha or Tamaha. Uh, if you knew, if you're a local around here in Stigler, Spyro, uh, around Haskell County, if you know or if you have any historical uh, society, anybody that's watching this, if you know how many Choctaws that came here, please let me know. I would like to know as well. well I know a few came here. I don't know uh, which, which party, which team, or, or what chief came along with them or, or who, but I know they came along on this bluff right here back in here behind me in this area or where I'm standing at right here and this is, looks really kind of like a landing site to me like a landing uh, where uh, a boat would dock off in this area right here but who knows so but Tamaha was a rarely like I said a rarely been spoken of and of course there's a cemetery about maybe five minutes from here and speaks well got a lot of a uh, uh, unknown unmarked graves and there's few that kind of stands there and it's a public cemetery but there's few that still stands about the Choctaw graves and stuff but uh but here's the site right here in this area on the Arkansas River where the Choctaws came along and landed right here in Tamaha so we can go ahead and head over here to the cemetery and speak there for a little bit and then uh and we'll go on from there all right uh, there's a small jail over here, I believe, and I don't know a story, but a local here around here that I spoke to a few months back stating that, I don't know how true it is, but stating that's where uh, Belle Star, if y'all heard of Belle Star, of course, she's her home site's not too far from here and possibly got held here in this jail. He knows, that he's, he's a local, so I'm just going what he says, but y'all, it, it may be because the way... I seen the jail was built in 1890 and I think she died in 1889, I believe, late 1880s. But I'm just going to go as is, but I'll show you the jail and then we'll go to the cemetery, all right? So stick with me and uh, we'll see you in the future. Welcome back everybody and we are here at Tamaha Cemetery as you can see behind me it's a pretty good sized cemetery but right now we're going to be talking about the earliest grave here in Tamaha and of course as we're talking about Tamaha about the Choctaws coming over here and landed right over uh, near the site that we was at uh, coming off the steamboat uh, of course like I said I don't know how many Choctaws that came here but as they came here, some have passed on. So we don't know really the original where they're buried yet, but they found a gravesite of the earliest marker here on the cemetery. So let's go over there and take a look right quick and I'll show y'all. So this marker, you see uh, standing up in the white, it's the oldest marked grave in the cemetery. So, a few years back, I remember coming up here, and uh, of course, it was readable. But through weather and time, it kind of started to fade out. I think someone tried to use marker or something, tried to get the name, the date, of the uh, birth and the death. But I think it just <laughs> wore it away. But we could try to make it out. Maybe you can help me. But I believe it was 18, some, somewhere in the 1830s. If I remember correctly but hopefully he can still read it I know I see an E but I cannot make out the name if you can that's great write a comment or something let me know if you can read out the name Let's see the birth year 
I see, okay, I see born December, I don't know, if, see, it looks like not, December not, looks like an 8, 1832, I will say, 1832, and it looks like died, E-D, I-E-D, okay, died, December 5th, I will say, looks like 5th. There's a one and an eight, eighteen, looks like a three, eighteen thirty, looks like an eight, eighteen thirty eight. And that would be either, see, so December 9th, but he or she died on the 5th, so shy of being he or she's sixth birthday. And he or she came along the time. On a trail of tears. So they. Either. He or she was born in Mississippi. Or along the route. Or when she got he or she got here. And then didn't make it. Close to her six, he or she's sixth birthday. So. Pretty sad. But. But again if you know the name. If you see the name on there. Try to make it out. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. Maybe we can do research on this person. Maybe. We'll know something. There it is right there. That's the oldest marker that we can find here. But before I leave here and before we end here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you all something here that really caught my attention. Um, a few years back, I did a training on uh, restorating tombstones. I know many people restorate cemeteries, tombstones, and a few other things. But restorating is kind of like bringing it back to life, revising it kind of. And I'm astounded of this community. And if you're here right now where I'm standing here at the cemetery, uh, most cemeteries that I go to, and they're pretty nice and clean and well-kept, but this is really well-kept at a small community of Tamaha. And I got to say all your Tamaha communities or whoever, the family of uh, Tamaha Cemetery, uh, keeping this well-maintained. I mean, this is really sophisticated, I would say in the right words and so sort of speak but when i look at these tombstones you could tell either they came out here to clean them or they maybe hire somebody to come out here to clean them i don't know or uh, somebody have done something right and they did it great so these tombstones i want to show you and uh i don't mind to you know show you some stuff like like we do or I do sometimes, but seeing somebody doing this, it makes it, it makes a difference at a cemetery. And when you look at these tombstones, it kind of makes you think, you know, these tombstones look like, you know, to me, to honestly, to me, it makes it feel like if these tombstones would even, you know, don't look old to me. It looks like they just been placed here like maybe a year or two ago. You know, that's how nice it is. Very elite. So here's some of these tombstones that you know looks very elite to me very prestige so if we look at the date 1903 1906 and 1915 look how nice they are I mean it's just clean look like someone just bought it like maybe two three years ago looks well kept you know cleaned them they may come up here maybe every other year or maybe each year or every other month or so but they keep this area clean. As you can see, look, they even spray around to make sure where all the spots where the graves are at. See, even like unmarked graves and stuff. It's very noticeable. And I'm very glad about this. And this tombstone over there uh, looks really clean. Not super, but you know you can read it. Like, I can read it from here. H. Almond, born August 20th, 1819, died August 11th, 1899. And as I know, this has been well kept and well clean. You can see someone been scrubbing, spraying. You can see kind of drip right there. But you know they've been cleaning. And see these spots right here? Turns black when you put uh, solutions and stuff on there. Turns black. But someone's been here 
keeping that clean there. And I'm, I'll say I'll give you a thumbs up for that. For everything. Look, I, I noticed some things over here too. Earlier, I was looking. I'll take you to these tombstones. And like these, look at here. You can see it. Again, there's some black marks up there where someone's been cleaning. Probably with a lot of moss and all that. You can see spots where all the moss used to be at. Um, Cornelia uh, JV, wife of J.S. Force, 1858, 1885. You know, and it's well maintained, so is that one. But these right here look really, really elite. I gotta say. And this looks like brand new, like someone just bought it, you know. Besides that little locals you see right there. <laughs> but wow, it is very amazing to see something that nice, that clean. Like they just got it. They may have, I don't know, but it looks really, really nice. You can tell, you know, it's like in that time. You know, just look at here. Usually you'll see like moss top stuff all over it, over it already and you can't read it. But, but you know, you can still see words on here. Really interesting. So like these, 1896. Look how clean it is. Look at that tombstone. It's just very, very clean. But yes, I'll, I'll prop to you guys here to clean the cemetery. Wow, this is really, really nice. Most cemeteries that I've seen, especially city cemeteries, don't look this clean. <laughs> Hate to say, but wow. But yes, uh, you don't hardly see any cemeteries like this, uh, especially a community this size, this small community way up here in a kind of like isolated area. I think it's like 15 minutes from Stigler and maybe 10, 15 minutes from Kyoto. But you don't hardly see cemeteries just well kept in this community, this small community. But I'm very glad to see this is well kept and well maintained. And they're very, very nice, especially that one over there, you know, that oldest marker there. That's, that's really kind of, you know, really, you know, to uh, see that been restored and try to be clean I think hopefully they'll if they can read the marker they can put a good decent marker on there and uh, commemorate who passed on right there maybe they can read it themselves so maybe they'll hopefully get it fixed or something that'd be pretty cool to do that but even the unmarked graves and ones that you, I can see they're all already been fixed but like I said uh, you don't see a, a city cemetery this nice so, but I'm glad this community came together or whoever did this, it's really nice. Really nice, I did a great job. But that's uh, pretty much it today. We're here in Tamaha, it's kind of warm. So as we say in Choctaw, Chapisalajagi. And also, before I leave here, please like, share, and subscribe, okay? And uh, if you're really interested in what I do, you know, subscribe, like, and share, you know, that easy. And if you got questions, feel free to comment. So, and I'll I'll see uh, I can answer. If you just want to comment, I appreciate that as well. So again, like we say in Choctaw, Chipisalajiki, and we shall see you on the next on the His Press Project.